I want to breeze through what I think is one of the most important things, because it's one of the most important things that is compromising the health of our children, so they cannot tolerate all of the other things. And that is the massive destruction of the human microbiome. What is the human microbiome? That's basically all of the microbes, the bacteria, the yeast, the viruses that live in and around and on the human body, the vast majority of which are in the gastrointestinal tract. And um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Human Genome Project. All this money and effort was put into the Human Genome Project, mapping the human genome. We thought we were going to find all the answers about health, human health in understanding the human genome. Well, a similar type initiative was started a number of years ago called the Human Microbiome Project. And the reason why is because scientists are starting to understand that the human microbiome, the germs that live in our body, are actually crucial to human health. They're all calling them now an, another organ. The two to five pounds of microbes that live in your body are literally like another organ. If you didn't have those microbes in your body, you would die. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about why they're so important, but this is what we've been doing since the World War II, since the development of antibiotics and all of these chemicals out there. We've basically been carpet bombing and napalming our microbiome completely altering it, which is hugely important. Why? There's something that's developing called gut dysbiosis, which is kind of a fancy term for the microbes in your body are out of balance. So if you think about the microbiome as like um, a pond in your body, and you know how ponds have an ecology, and you need to have a certain number of fish and bugs and birds and algae and different kinds of things that exist in an ecology for it to be healthy. The same is true of your microbiome. You need to have a certain diversity of species in your microbiome, and you need to have the right balance of microbes. So if you think about it in, a in a pond, if you took like a giant ball of mercury or a giant ball of some kind of toxic chemical and you throw it into that pond, what happens to the ecology of that pond? It's totally destroyed and you might get some kind of gross algae bloom and that isn't in, you know, it's not indigenous to that pond and the health of that pond is destroyed. Same thing happens in the, in the, in your intestines when you take an antibiotic or you have a chemical exposure. Um, another one that I mentioned before was proton pump inhibitors. All these babies that are being put on um, Prilosec and Prevacid because they have reflex, because they have food sensitivities, that's destroying their microbiome. So why is the microbiome so important? There are many, many functions that the gut microbes do. They help us digest food. Literally, if you put the food in your mouth and you didn't have the right mo microbes in there, you can't extract the nutrients from the food. So you could be eating the healthiest diet every single day, but if you don't have the right microbes in there, you're not able to extract and utilize the nutrients. It help, these microbes help us make neurotransmitters. So serotonin, that really important neurotransmitter, which is important for mood and behavior, you know, people who have depression get, on put, get put on serotonin reuptake inhibitors so they can keep cycling serotonin in their brain. Serotonin is so important. And um, the germs in your gut are actually responsible for the production of serotonin. They play a large role in it. Um, these microbes help us produce enzymes and vitamins, like B vitamins. They actually help produce immune cells, and they play a critical role in immune function. They have um, this function called, uh, like, a T. Re uh, they help s uh, with support T regulation, T cell regulation in the gut, which is regulation of immune cells. So when you, you know, when you have an autoimmune disease or you have allergies, you have your immune system that's like overactive or underactive. Well, the microbes actually play a role in regulating that, turning the immune system on and turning it off. In other words, signaling to our immune cells. The gut bacteria talk to our immune cells and help us regulate our immune system. So I'll tell you, if you have some kind of autoimmune condition or you have some kind of allergic condition, chances are you've got some imbalance in your gut, some bacteria that either shouldn't be there or you don't have the, the right diversity in there. This is one of the other really, really important things that microbes in our gut do. They help us detoxify. The best example I can give is this. There was a study done in the 1980s where a researcher took two groups of mice. He fed one group of mice antibiotics, and the other group of mice did not get antibiotics. Then he fed both groups of mice methylmercury. And what he found, and by the way, methylmercury, just so you know, is extremely neurotoxic. 
And what he found was that the mice who had the antibiotic actually retained the methylmercury in their fatty tissues, in their liver, in their brain. But the uh, mice who did not receive the antibiotic actually excreted the majority of it in their stool. What does that tell you about the role of your gut microbes? And when you take the antibiotics, you're basically handicapping your ability to detoxify. It's not the only thing that helps you detoxify, you know, eating certain types of foods, um, and your genetics can play into how well you detoxify, but if your microbes are out of balance, you're gonna have a harder time detoxifying. And gut dysbiosis, this imbalance in bacteria in your guts, can lead to any, ho any number of symptoms, everything from mood symptoms, skin symptoms, attention symptoms, the list goes on and on and on. And basically, if you look back through the history of what we've done in the last 75 years, is we have gone an all-out assault on our guts and our gut microbes. And I can break down a few of these things. We had the introduction of antibiotics in the post-World War II era, Steroid medications, hormone medications, the asthma medications, birth control pills, all wreak havoc on your gut microbes. You know, um, one of the things that doctors, when you go in and you, uh, as a young woman, if you get birth control pills, the doctors may say to you, you know, you might experience a few more yeast infections, vaginal yeast infections than normal. The reason why is because those medications are disrupting your gut bacteria, and yeast is one of the bad or opportunistic microbes that overgrows when you do that. They know this is happening. It's just everywhere. Um, PPIs I mentioned, which are the reflex medications, and the birthing practices I mentioned as well. All the babies being born on antibiotics. They're being born with gut dysbiosis. So their immune systems are disabled before they've even had a chance to grow and develop. This is another one, and again, I don't think I need to spend a lot of time talking to you all about this. If you're watching this conference, you know about the standard American diet and how, um, you know, lack of, the lack of nutrients in the standard American diet and how much we're missing by not eating the right foods. But I want to just put another layer on that, which is think about that gut dysbiosis and how much the foods we eat impact that. Sugar actually feeds the wrong kind of microbes. So if you think about how much sugar consumption has gone up in the U.S., I mean, look at that. That's insane. People didn't used to eat sugar. It used to be really expensive. Now it's cheap, and it's how it's the bulk of the calories we're getting is from sugars and, and also simple car carbohydrates, which convert to sugars really easily. So that is a major factor contributing to all of this, these gut imbalances. And the other thing is, those good bacteria in your gut, the ones that make the neurotransmitters, the ones that help you digest your food and assimilate nutrients and regulate your immune system, do you know what they love? They love fiber. So I tell my kids that um, they have pets in their gut, and you have to feed the pets. What do the pets eat? The vegetables. So if you don't eat vegetables, you're not feeding the pets in your body and you're killing them. That's what I tell my kids, but not so severely. So the point is, you have to feed the germs in your gut because they thrive on fibrous foods and vegetables. But this is what the U.S. Um, diet looks like. The vast majority of the calories we're taking in are from processed foods, refined carbohydrates in particular, the pizzas, the chicken nuggets, the pretzels, the chips, the crackers, the cookies. Look how little plant food we're getting. Look how little plant food we're getting. So we're not feeding our microbiome. It has tremendous consequences. And I'll just go through a couple other things really quickly that um, impact the gut. Glyphosate. If anybody's been following um, Dr. Stephanie Seneff at, at MIT, she's done a lot of research into how glyphosate, which glyphosate, again, is the leading chemical in Roundup, so it's a thing that people spray on their lawns to get rid of weeds. And it's also what's sprayed on genetically modified food crops. So corn, soy, it's also used to dry, as a drying agent on things like wheat and oats and nuts. It's ubiquitous, ubiquitous in this environment. You can't escape it. I'm sure you, um, you've heard of the uh, women who are now testing their breast milk and finding glyphosate in their breast milk, even when they eat organic and don't eat GMOs. It is everywhere. But you know what Stephanie Seneff has pulled out is that glyphosate is um, destroying the gut bacteria. So it's just one more thing. It's like, you know, like spraying an antibiotic on your food. 
So again, why this is so important is because if you think of a rich, diverse ecology of microbes in your gut, your immune system is going to work properly. But when you don't have that rich ecology and you have the, the a wrong sort of balance of microbes in your gut, your immune system is inevitably going to be impacted. And then you're going to start developing pathologies like autoimmunity and allergy.